Hello all, it's me Waku Waku, and today I will be going through refinement presets, how and what I believe players should be choosing based on their playstyle, what lines they have developed, and how many, along with some offline setups you should be running. So let's get into it. Firstly you will need to have invested into the refinement tech tree to max out your potential stats. The last research is accessory 3 which you will level your last jewelry piece from grey up to gold. This will go on to unlocking your fourth badge slot on gear, so this research is very important to invest into. Along with this you will need to play events, do weekly challenges and grind up expedition beyond daily to earn refined rough and wash stones. These will be used to upgrade and reroll the stats. Along with this you unlock more available stat slots so as long as the gear respective is higher quality so green for first slot, blue for second purple for third and lastly gold quality gear for the last stat slot. That's the basic so let's get on to the stats available. We should start with the max potential of all the main stats we have. This will be if all eight stat slots have the same stat type. We will go for the troop type stats first and they have a max of 320% total of their attack health and defense stats. Next is the total stats which max at 120% each. This includes the total reductions. Army size will max out at 240,000 troops. Reinforced capacity and rally size expansion will both max out at 800,000 each. Fortification attack and defense along with wall defense are insignificant. I will discuss this when it is relevant but as a whole, they're pointless in the current state of the game. And the same will be said for rally marching speed increase. There is just no reason to run the stat in any combat situation over other battle stats. Now we will move on to the more utility stats, which we will start with hospital healing speed, research speed and construction speed all having at max a 200% bonus. These stats are more useful in different stages of the game and the hospital healing speed may be the best refinement stat in the game, or at least the second best, but I will cover this later in the video which leaves us on to the last three stats. Hospital capacity will fall under the same banner as wall defense, a fairly useless stat and only going up to 80,000 additional. If it was three times this amount, it could have been useful on defense, but as a whole, it is pointless. And finally, endurance recovery and motivation recovery. Some of the better passive stats you could reroll in your refinement. Endurance recovery translates to more rebel groups, directly increasing the amount of badge chests you will gather daily along with allowing you to do more Dragon Lair rallies. Especially in active alliances, this will massively boost your progress for your Dragon Awakenings, or even just grinding up your Dragons in general. This will stack up to 240% with all eight slots, and is one of the best passive stats to get. Along with this motivation recovery, there is fair argument to say this is the best stat to have in the game. This is what you will use to hit enemy rebel leaders, which give your alliance chests, you'll generate around 42 motivation every 10 minutes shown in this video. This is without any motivation boosts or research. So around 4.2 per minute or 210 per hour before stat boosts. Just from refinement alone, the boost of 240% brings 210 per hour up to 674 per hour. Just from refinement, you could boost your recovery from 5,040 per day all the way up to 16,176 per day. Even before I talk about presets motivation recovery is what we will say is the best stat to get in refinement. Whether a newer player grinding up gear upgrades or a developed account who needs to hit rebels for their alliance and also keep up with hitting level 6 rebels for red quality gear. It is the best stat available. Now we get to move on to the refinement presets I would recommend players to get. For starter the first two are basically free and your third and fourth will cost 100 black diamonds and 300 black diamonds, respectively. Most players will benefit from a main combat build, an economic type build you will use most of the time, a event build, this will depend on the player, and either a second battle build if you run different troop types or combo lineups or even a defense tanking build. I will break these down more now. Starting with your main combat build, I will assume you have one lineup with one single troop, for any offensive build or supporting role you would want to have army size on all your slots. The next stats you will be rolling for are the troops attack and health stats. Then it is a choice between trying to re-roll for total attack or your troop types defense. If you already have high survival stats then boosting your lines damage will be better, 
but generally it is going to be best to go for your troops defense stats, especially if they're your main line you'll be using. Next I will go over an economic build. I will say it will depend on your current state of the game, as something like construction and research speed are solid to have but they aren't good passive stats to hang on to, while outside of events like Lord of Lords. And typically, if you have already maxed out your refinement tree, then you would already be done most of the essential research and most of the honor levels for buildings. But regardless, the point stands these stats, more so construction speed is amazing for Lord of Lords. Motivation recovery and endurance recovery are nearly essential on any economic build, increasing the amount of rebels and level 6 rebels you can hit per day, along with rebel groups with endurance recovery passively building up your badges. These two are the best, along with training speed for your troops, stacking up to 160%. If you're an active player and do elite challenges, often for the extra motivation items, the troops' training speed helps save on hundreds of days of speedups. And the last two stats I would say to consider are hospital healing speed, although I will recommend this later for a better preset. This is a significant boost to the amount you will save from healing troops. Sadly, it isn't cost reduction so your resources will still never be safe. And the last stat I would recommend is your main troop type's attack stats, reason being just for the cases being offline and maybe you lose bubble. You're already doomed if any raiders are interested in your kingdom. But at the very least, you will have some extra attack stats to handle their army and may even capture their lord. If you're really into that idea, you can swap out the training speed or endurance recovery for either a second troop's attack stat or your main line's help. Get used to using the new quick adjust option and getting some solid badges on your rebel gear too. You'll thank me later. An event build will be exactly like a standard combat build you will be using. However, you will want to be swapping out one of your stats for healing speed or as a rally lead looking into rally size bonuses. I'll start with the healing speed bonus. Up to 200% is a massive boost. Think of it like this. If healing your army took 100 days of speed ups, 200% will reduce this down to 25 days. Even if you may lose some combat prowess, the amount of resources saved through this is undeniable, especially in a more competitive scene like Alliance Conquest and more so Ultimate Conquest and even Siege of Winterfell now with its own playoff season. Told you this was one of the best stats to get in refinement, and the rally size is also a fair discussion. Of course, more so applying to rally leaders. Already with Dragon Skill, you can increase your rally size by up to 410,000 extra rallied troops. And with all eight slots in refinement, gain an additional 800,000 troops inside a rally. But one thing you should know about rally size in Alliance Conquest if say a player has a 3 million troop limit. That is the max amount that can participate in a defense plus an extra 1 million troops. This can work in two ways. Firstly, more troops which can participate in defense sounds like a no-brainer, able to hold against more enemy attacks and likely actually defend the building. However, if we're against an extremely powerful player who will solo or annihilate any defense we may put up, then less troops indirectly will lead to less losses as a whole. They kill 3 million knocking out say 3 to 4 players instead of 4 million and 4 to 5 players per attack. It isn't hard to spam solo attack in Alliance Conquest as long as the player is committed. This is a very specific circumstance but just keep it in mind. And the same could be said in reverse. More rallied troops may lead to overkilling the target in these event circumstances. But as a whole, a fantastic stat to have. I would say keep the army size and your main troops attack stat and then either choose your second troop's attacking stat, your main troop's health stat for the survival bonus or rally size expansion. And then lastly, you must pick healing speed. There is no way to avoid just how much of an impact healing speed will have. And lastly, I will go through a secondary combat build, mainly focused on defense. This can be for event building defense like Champion Castle Siege or Alliance Conquest, or in general PvP. Yes, this does include trap accounts, the best lineups for defense will be weakness synergy and using multiple healers and their troop types. Most players outside of the maybe the top 15 cannot reliably defend with all three troop types. But in defense settings it is different. At least in events like Alliance Conquest during defense you will not receive exclusively your main troop type unless your alliance is coordinated. Still a double or triple weakness setting, having all three main troop attack stats in refinement and in event settings using rally size to increase the amount of troops you will defend with is the best setup. 
An additional 800,000 troops will preform better than the extra 120% total attack for your lineups. Yes, you will give up on healing speed in this case, but you will need the additional attack bonuses. You want fair or positive trades when defending in events if you aren't going to overkill all their rallies. Losing 1 million troops on your end to kill 2.5 million of theirs is a fantastic trade, and outside of events, since you won't need army size, you can substitute this for either reinforced capacity if you have a supporting team to help you, or for the total attack stats and even reduction if you feel. If you're a single troop type player, then you will purely focus on their stats, boosting their attack, health and defense instead, and then choosing the fourth stat to boost your defense. These types of builds are a lot better in event settings where you are a main building holder and not a rally lead, which may not be the best for your alliance if you cannot take the buildings in the first place. Refinement brought about a major stat boost to many players and more importantly accessible for everyone. And when presets came out, now no restrictions existed with having to choose half combat, half healing, half motivation. We could freely switch between the builds we needed and sometimes forget to switch over to our battle talents before entering into events and realizing all the stats were missing. Just joking, of course. Good luck in Siege of Winterfell playoffs if you have made it, by the way. And thanks for watching.